What's up Chill Squad, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new video. Now as you can see by the title I am going to be going through my settings, colorblind modes, be telling you in my opinion the best weapons to use in Red Online and also may throw in some ability cards in, you know, if you want to try any of them because you are a new player to this game whether it's for PS4, Xbox One or PC. If any of this helps you out then be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Feel free to drop a like and if you are new around my channel be sure to subscribe, join my discord server, follow me on Twitch as I live stream over on there and by all means feel free to follow me on Twitter as well. But without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's get into this video. Now the biggest question that I have been asked several times is how did I get this pink color on my settings? Now it's simple. Go to settings, display, and colorblind mode. Now I will get into this so I can get over and done with, and then I'll go through all the other things. But the colorblind mode that I use is this one. Now, in my opinion, this is the best colorblind mode that I have ever used. I have tried out the other ones, which is this one and also this one. Now I will be showing you what it looks like with the colorblind mode off, with it on, and hopefully you can decide whether you want to try out some of these or you just want to keep it off completely. So colorblind mode is off and I'm just going to go to my map and this is of course what it will look like. Now when I was playing the game and I was seeing all of this it didn't really bother me but after a while I was saying to myself okay the map is looking dull there's nothing really nice to look at around here so I tried to flip through some of the colorblind modes and I found the perfect one now let's try out the one that I use which is probably most of the people's favorites that have asked me about this, they've said that it looks really nice, it stands out, there's just like so much stuff that they've said, but this is what it looks like if you have the pink colour on. Now, as you can see from the colourblind mode being off to having it as the pink one, there is so much life to this game now. There is a lot that stands out and I just honestly love the way the map looks and also the waypoint as well, of course it's pink. I'll zoom in so you can see it better, but it's pink and it just honestly looks beautiful and I'm honestly loving it. The colours that stand out the most to me are white, black, brown, red, purple, pink, yellow and a few blues as well. So from me seeing colourblind mode off, trying out these colours of the clothing to having it as the pink colour, there's just like so much difference in my opinion that I see. Now if you are colour blind and you want to try out this then by all means feel free to do so. But I will be going through this one as well. Now this one doesn't really show you much life on the map. The colours are dull. You see your camp is dark blue. Your waypoint is like a blood orange I guess you could say. There's not really much to look at but if you like this feel free to go for it. Now we will be going through this one as well and as you now can see with the waypoint being much of a dark orange the icons around the map are kind of like a light orange but Again, there's not really much to look at, it's not really nice, but if you want to try this out, then feel free to do so. But as you go through the colorblind mode, it will show you the colors that you will be able to see more, which is yellow, blue, the story mode, the red and line. So Rockstar have done a really good job with this, and honestly, I am liking it, but this has to be my favourite one, I've been using this for months now, I have not changed and like I've said I've seen colours a lot better, I've gone through the colours that I've seen stand out and I'm honestly in love with it. 
So if you want to try out your colorblind mode, ladies and gentlemen, by all means feel free to do so. So moving on to the rest of the stuff, the kill effects, of course, I have that on. My HUD save zone. Now this obviously depends on your TV size. I have mine as this. My HUD preset is custom. My status icons are dynamic. My subtitles are on. I have my subtitle speakers names off. My weapon reticle. Now this one it is a huge difference. I've seen a lot of people use this one. That is fine. But if you want to go ultra realistic, then you can turn it off. But I have stuck with the dot for a while. It has somewhat helped me out. I have also tried it with off. And honestly, if you are a first person kind of player, then go realistic. This will be the best one for first person as you are able to go first person in this game. Now, of course, the rest of the stuff, the score timers, the ticker, central messages are on, vertical messages is off, invites on, there's like so much stuff that you just can go through on this, it is absolutely amazing. Now, let's get into the controls. Invert look is off, vibration is off. Sometimes I turn it on if I'm looking for treasure maps or anything like that. Use cycle camera control for photo mode. That's on my light bar effect. Now this one is where it gets interesting. Now the lock on mode, whether you can have it for free aim, narrow or normal or wide. I do have it on wide so it locks on to targets a lot better. If there is someone in, still in front of me, once I'm done with that person, I can lock onto the person that's onto the left and then right. This one has really helped me out with battles in free roam, in PvP. It has been really, really helpful. Now, my aim assist strength is full. My aim assist strength on the mount slash vehicle is full. My arm my pin switching is off. My third person controls is standard camera relative. Look sensitivity. Now I have turned these down a bit, but it's okay. I'm not much of a um, third person kind of guy. Sometimes I like to go into first person to feel that realism. But the aim slash look dead zone, I do have that turned down all the way. I have standard FPS for first person, and again, I have most of these turned down if I'm in first person, same as I am in third. And I also have my dead zone turned down. Now, accessibility, toggle to run, tap assist off, tap to hold delay is of course all the way down. Hold to real fishing is off. Now you can, you know, turn this on if you want to. It's up to you. Now, camera, it's entirely up to you what you want to do with this one. I haven't really messed around with it as much because you know I don't want to like change anything just in case I'm like okay what's wrong with this you know so I've just left it as it is also my audio if you're interested in that I have it as this I don't have it full blast sometimes I have it I would say around about here because when you go into the tailor he can be quite annoying let me just say that now the best weapons to use in Red Dead Online, I would say when you are starting out, I would go with the Bolt Action. Now this weapon is really nice and it gets the job done. It isn't a pain in the ass. It can be sometimes, but if you want the job done nice and easy with your enemies, I wouldn't say like players because, you know, they could be high ranked and they could be using a rolling block or a Lancaster or anything like that. But if you're just starting out, then I would suggest using the bolt action. I have started out with this one before and it is very helpful. Now, 
as you progress through the ranks you can either go with a shotgun or you can go with a another repeater or rifle it's entirely up to you what weapon you want to go for but the best weapon I would mainly go for next is the Lancaster now I have all of the weapons in the game so I will be showing you the stats for them as well as the way my weapons look but as you see the damage with the Lancaster compared to the bolt action there's not really much of a difference other than the damage with the bolt is kind of down but with the damage with the Lancaster that's up now of course this does obviously change with the way your bullets are so if you have express it's going to be more of a damage regular it's not going to be that much of a damage same with high velocity as well now you do get express and high velocity as you rank up in the game but comparing it to the Lancaster repeater with express rounds with the bolt action express rounds there's not much of a difference other than I would say the Lancaster is fast to shoot whilst the bolt action does take some time to cock back and aim like if you do like the bolt action better than the Lancaster is entirely up to you but the Lancaster obviously does shoot faster and it will get the job done quicker so as you move on through the ranks I would highly suggest you go for the bolt action first and then go with the Lancaster repeater now you may say to me okay Aiden so what is the best shotgun for PvP the best shotgun to use for PvP as most of the PvP experts would say and that's the double barreled shotgun now don't mind mine being in invisible let's just ignore that but um, the double barreled shotgun is really nice to use for PvP and it also is good for the paint it black card but if you do like free aim in this game I wouldn't suggest the double barreled shotgun I would suggest the semi-automatic shotgun now this one is very nice it is smooth it is fast and if you like to spam the R2 button or R1 or whatever button it is you use to shoot it is really nice it also doesn't have that much in bullets so make your shots count now the reload as well it can be quite of a 50 50 situation and that's why I'm saying make sure your bullets count because as soon as you run out of the bullets and you are reloading, you could be dead instantly so I would go with the semi-automatic shotgun now the repeating shotgun I would say it's an okay shotgun for like close range but that's why I would say the double barrel shotgun is better at close range than the repeating shotgun maybe the pump action can get the job done quicker but it's up to you on what weapon you want to use now you may be moving on to hunting now if you like hunting or love hunting in this game the best weapon to start off with is the varmint rifle this can take down small animals such as rabbits skunks raccoons muskrats opossums but the bolt action is best for taking down deers, bucks, bears, anything that is medium size to large size I would guess. So the best hunting weapons to use I would say is the varmint and the bolt action. Now you can also use the bow for squirrels because if you use the varmint it can vary on whether it damages the pelt or it doesn't but the bow does give you options on the kind of arrows that you use 
Now you have dynamite, you can have poison, you can have small game, and you can have just regular. Now, I was starting out with a bow for a little while, and then I was switching to the varmint. But the bow did help me out with certain animals, like I was saying with squirrels and that, with the small game arrows. They were perfect for me to get the three star pelt if I wanted it. And if I wanted a rabbit, I would use the varmint rifle. Now you may be moving on to the uh, revolvers. You may be asking me what are the best revolvers in this game. I would say the best ones are Schofield. Now I've been using a Schofield for a little while. They have got the job done for me, but they have also let me down sometimes. So I would more or less like switch between the Lamarts, the Navies, or if you like the fast type of weapons, I would go with the Mausers, or I would go with the semi-automatic pistols. Now, what I have done as well is when I have been in PvP, I have tried out the Mauser and the semi-automatic pistol. And trust me, they have been really, really helpful. And I have really liked the way that these weapons have acted in PvP. And it is up to you if you want to try the Mauser in the left, the semi in the right, or the semi in the left and the Mauser in the right. But if you want to just go for both of these, or both of the Mausers, it's entirely up to you. But I'm honestly liking the way that these pistols shoot. But of course, be sure to buy some gun oil, because if your weapons are dirty, and of course, they do not deliver the punch that you expect. Now, this can sometimes vary on how your weapons get dirty. They can get dirty if you just swim in the lake, or if you are using them too much. But yeah, be sure to buy some gun oil, get those guns cleaned so they can work properly, they can work out your enemies to get them killed quicker, you know, stuff like that. But honestly, the best weapons to start off with, ladies and gentlemen, I would say is the bolt action and the varmint rifle. Now, of course, the weapons that you do start off with at first is the Kalman. Yes, it's an okay weapon, but it ain't the best. So as you progress through the ranks, it's entirely up to you on what weapon you want to use. Because, like I said, I've got them all. So I just choose between them. But I do like the Schofield. If I'm going on a Moonshine run. Or if I'm going in a Trader run. I would have the Schofields. And they would just get the job done for me. Or I just run in with a shotgun. And go ape shit. But other than that. like I really do like the Schofields. I do like the Varmint for hunting. And of course I like the Bolt. For getting those big game animals, giving them to Crips, lovely. But the ability cards, now it is of course up to you on what ability cards you want to use, but the best one to start off with I would say is the Painted Black. Now if you're not much of a Painted Black person and you like Focus Fire, this is best for sniping. Now I'm not sure about the other three cards that I don't have unlocked. But I do obviously know about slow and steady. This one can make you really good, I would say, in PvP. But it can also vary because, you know, if you want to go with this card, that's up to you. But you've got the meaning behind this card. But I've also stuck with Painted Black. It's always been my go-to card. Now, for your first, second and third passive, you will get the second and third as you progress through the ranks. But the ones that I run with is Sharpshooter, and that's whilst using a scope, you deal much more damage and take much less damage. With this card, Gunslinger's Choice 3, while dual wielding with ranged weapons, 
deal much more damage and are much more accurate. And of course the last one is winning streak. Each consecutive shot on the same target does much more damage than the last. Damage bonus ends if the target is not shot for 10 seconds. So be sure to make your shots count ladies and gentlemen. But if you want to try out any of the other cards that is entirely up to you. But I've also got Fool Me Once. I've got Friends for Life. And I've also got the Unblinking Eye 3. Now I do have other ones unlocked but I have stuck with these cards for a while. And they have helped me out in Painting Black. They have helped me out in free room battles they've just done so much good for me but if you want to try any other cards then it's entirely up to you but honestly I am loving this game as a whole and I know a lot of you may be saying is this game worth buying I'm not too sure on PC side of things because of what's been happening now if you are clueless about what's been happening on PC modders hackers cheaters are flooding the servers using popular streamers names to get them banned and I just wouldn't recommend playing online on PC graphics wise for story mode absolutely amazing I would get this game on PC for the story mode purposes so you can get the ultra graphics side of things and just enjoy the story mode as a whole for online, whether you have an Xbox or PS4, that's the best place to, of course, play online. And I am on PlayStation 4. I have not dealt with hackers, modders, cheaters as much, but you do get lag switches. Now, what lag switching is, it's where your character is lagging all over the place for the other person, but you're perfectly still on your end so for me if I'm aiming onto an enemy I'd be able to kill them correctly and without issues but for them they will be having issues because they'll just see me lagging all over the place and they won't be able to kill me as much now if you want to add me on PlayStation 4 if you want to make some money in this game because you are new I am more than willing to help you out I will leave my PS4 gamer tag in the description down below also, I will be leading my Discord, my Twitter, and also my Twitch as well. I do live stream on Twitch, so if you want to check me out over there and let me know that I've helped you out, then I'll be more than happy to give you any more tips if I come up with any. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that has been it for this video. I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, and hashtag... Stay safe everyone.